I believe in miracles because I believe in God. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. God bless everyone and welcome to the Ernest Angley Hour. We have a wonderful program for you. The message today is who do you serve? People can claim to be Christian, but what about their lifestyle, their actions? You know, that speaks louder than whatever they profess. It's important that we serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. I trust this message will bless you, but first we have some good songs for you. The Singing Men's Quartet, Go Tell John. and honey were his food. John was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. John was preaching and baptizing, crying, repent, the Lord will come. John prepared the people to receive God's only Son. And when he baptized,
of the message for tonight. In question form, who do you serve? Who do you serve? And I immediately want to take you into the Old Testament to the book of Daniel. Here is recorded the story of three Hebrew boys and their miraculous deliverance from the fiery furnace. These three Hebrew boys were taken captive by King Nebuchadnezzar and the kingdom of Babylon, taken from their homeland in Israel to live in Babylon, to be slaves in the court of the king. The kingdom of Babylon, if you ever study it, it was the greatest of its day, yet it was wicked and vile, full of idol worship, where they believe astrology began and other sorceries of the devil started. And in the midst of this environment were three Hebrew boys who served the Lord. And in the third chapter of Daniel, it says how King Nebuchadnezzar made a massive image out of gold. And he gathers the people together, the royalty, the governors, the captains, the high society of that place. And he announces, at the sound of the music, everyone is to fall down and worship the image of gold. And whoever does not worship this image, that same hour will be cast into a fiery furnace. Now the three Hebrew boys, servants of the living God, had a decision to make. Would they bow to this image? Would they give in to peer pressure as everyone else would bow? Would they give in to fear of the king's command? Would they give in to fear for their very life? Or would they stand tall and refuse to obey the king without fear of what people would say or think, without fear of losing their very lives? When the music played, everyone, the Bible says, bowed and worshipped this image. Everyone except the three Hebrew boys. By taking their stand for God, now the persecution comes. For accusations were brought against them before the king. King Nebuchadnezzar calls for these three Hebrew boys to be brought before him. Now, these boys stand alone before the most powerful man on the face of the earth and his court. Yet they were not alone because they served the true and living God. And he stood with them. The king gave them one more chance to save their lives and bow down to this image that he had created. He would even play the music once again so they would worship. But they responded in Daniel chapter 3, beginning in verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. The three Hebrew boys were true servants of the Lord. They held nothing in reserve from their God, not even their very life. They refused to allow the king's command, peer pressure, or the fear of death to persuade them into disobeying God. As they declared to the king, their lives were completely committed to serving the Lord. And their trust was in him, that he would do with their lives as he saw fit. But no matter what God decided to do with their lives, they would not worship or serve any other God but the true and living God. They knew God could spare their lives and that God would deliver them. He would either deliver them from the hand of the king by death or in life. 
Now in a rage, the king commands the Hebrews to be cast into the fiery furnace, and that the furnace is to be heated seven times hotter than ever before. At the king's command, the boys were bound, the furnace heated, and the Bible says because the command was so urgent by the king that the mightiest soldiers who were called to throw them into the furnace, by doing so, they were killed by the flame. Into the fiery furnace the boys went, but they rose up to their feet, unharmed with their bonds destroyed. And then Jesus appears and they were free to walk and talk with him in the furnace, unaffected by the power of nature, unaffected by the power of the flame. And in Daniel chapter 3, beginning in verse 26, Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth, and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word, and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which, which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Being true servants of the Lord, who would refuse to compromise in any way, in life or in death, Jesus was with them, and he used these three Hebrew boys to shine the light of truth in that dark, wicked kingdom. He could use them in such a way because they would not compromise. They only served the true and living God. You know, there is much that a person can learn from this story. When you serve the Lord and stand for truth, there is a price to pay. When you decide to give yourself unto the Lord as his servant, you will be tested and tried, even put into the furnace of persecution. For Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Not maybe, not could be. If you live godly in Christ, if you serve the Lord, you will at some point suffer persecution. However, if you remain faithful and refuse to bow, and only serve the Lord, you will not burn. Because Jesus will meet you there in the midst of your furnace. He promised to go with us all the way, even unto the end of the world. He promised to never leave us or forsake us. And tonight I ask you, who do you serve? Who, what do you bow to? Everyone bows to someone or something. And some of you out there, maybe you're watching this, you may be thinking, well, I bow to no one. I serve no one. Well, the fact that you declare that you do as you please confirms that you are a servant to yourself, that you bow to your own will. But Jesus said 
in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, "...no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other." What do you bow to? Who do you serve? The opinions and theories of people or the Word of God? You can't serve both. You can't pick and choose the doctrines and commandments of men, their theories and philosophies, and then pick and choose from the Word of God. It's one or the other. And if you are to serve God, you must embrace the whole truth, not parts or portions, the whole truth, and then reject anything or anyone that contradicts truth or opposes truth. And truth is the Word of God. Jesus said in John chapter 4, verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Many believe they will go to heaven if they simply believe in God and go to church. Some think by possessing good morals, doing good deeds, being kind to others, that that is sufficient to gain them access into heaven. But the Word of God teaches otherwise. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Works cannot gain you entrance into heaven. Salvation, heaven, that's a gift of God. And it comes only by salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. Salvation, again, is a gift of God. No man can earn it with their works and deeds. And the Bible declares that our goodness, our personal goodness, is insufficient. Isaiah 64, 6. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses, or all our goodness within ourselves are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, hath taken us away. If our own goodness can get us into heaven, Jesus would not have come into this world. But God so loved the world that He gave Jesus. And by His sacrifice on the cross and the divine blood He spilled at Calvary, this is how a person is made ready for heaven. Through a spiritual rebirth that Jesus called the born-again experience. John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And what do you bow to? Holiness or unholiness? Righteousness or unrighteousness? A servant of the Lord, being born again, will live a holy life. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. If a person does not live according to God's word, they will not gain access to God's heaven. You are either a slave to sin or a servant of God. And it tells us in Romans chapter 6, verses 22 and 23, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Who do you serve? What do you bow to? 
truth or false. In society today, truth has been discarded, cast into the streets. People think nothing today about lying and deceiving others. When in the past, years ago, lying was frowned upon, discouraged, and even at times punished. But today, lying is a way of life for some. They lie in business. They lie to authorities. They lie just for the sake of lying because the devil's in them and they love to deceive people. The Apostle Paul wrote that in the end there would, be, there would come a great falling away from truth and that seducers would wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. God has no part with liars and deceivers. In the 8th chapter of John, Jesus identified the devil as a liar and the father of all lies. Then in the 10th chapter of John, Jesus identified himself as truth. Who do you serve? What do you bow to, truth or lies and deceit? In God's eyes, lying is sin, and his servants will not lie. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. When people claim to serve the Lord and they do not bow to the word of God and live by the word, their religion is vain. In God's eyes, it's worthless. Because James wrote in James 1, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Again, deceit. And no deceit will ever enter into heaven. So it's time to know who it is you serve. Who do you really serve? It's time to know because Jesus knows. Jesus knows the difference between his true servants and those who claim to be his servants. In Matthew chapter 15, verses 8 and 9, Jesus said, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Not everyone who claims to serve the Lord is the Lord's servant. Who you serve will be determined by the condition of your heart, not by what you profess with your mouth. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, with the whole you. A servant of the Lord has Jesus as their first love. Jesus comes first in their life because Jesus is their master, ready to do his will, ready to make any sacrifice for him, just as the three Hebrew boys did. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. To be a servant of God is our reasonable just service unto him.
ever consider what you owe God for your life? From the day you were born, He wanted you to accept His glorious and eternal gift, Jesus Christ. Plus, many physical and financial gifts. Stop for a minute and consider, will you honor His love gifts through your offerings and ties to this ministry? Every day and every hour, we work to bless others everywhere. Please join us and let God's smile be upon your life. Every Friday on the Ernest Angley Ministries Facebook page, we invite the nations of the world to send in their prayer requests, and we cover them with prayer during our Friday night miracle service. People are responding by the thousands with great testimonies of blessing and deliverance. Need a job? Post a message. Have a sick child? Post a message. In despair? Post a message. Seeking the divine will of God? Battling drugs and alcohol? Remember, Jesus said all things are possible to him that believeth. Claim your miracle by joining us in prayer and then send us your praise report with a comment. It is that simple if you believe.
meet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. no more not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore Shore in the sweet by and by, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet, in the sweet by and by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Hope you enjoyed that song by the Cathedral Trio. Now taking you back to the conclusion of the message today. And friend, at the end, there will be prayer for salvation, healing, and need supplied. Now listen and be blessed. How do you view life? How do you view life? As an opportunity to please God? Or as an opportunity to please yourself. People that continually struggle to serve the Lord, they're always unhappy, complaining, miserable. The reason being is because they are not serving the Lord with all of their heart. Part of the time, if not all of the time, it's lip service. They are trying to serve the Lord and then at the same time serve another master. And usually that master is self. And they feel the obligation to do God's will when in reality they just want their own will and their own way. So what results in this? An internal battle a struggle within, between God and self. And as Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve both God and self, because they are enemies. Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, if any man will serve me, let him deny himself and take up his cross, and follow me. Do you obey self? Do you bow to selfish desires and ambitions? This is not the way of a true servant of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. 
Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If you have been purchased through the blood of Jesus, you do not belong to yourself. God purchased you. He owns you. And your life's mission is to glorify God in body and in spirit, which are not yours. Does your life serve God's purpose? Does your life bring glory to God? Matthew 16, verses 25 and 26. Jesus said, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Who do you serve? God or this world? Do you give yourself to this life on earth? In other words, are you so busy and preoccupied striving to enhance this life on earth to make it better in every way possible? Or do you strive to live your life unto the Lord, to please God daily, to lose your life here that you may gain eternal life on tomorrow? Remember the three Hebrew boys? They dared to be different. They were not looking out for themselves to protect their life here on earth. They sought only to do as their master would want them to do. They did not push their beliefs upon others, yet neither would they compromise their beliefs with others. And when the king tried to impose his idol god upon them, the three Hebrew boys stood tall. They did not bow, and therefore they did not burn in that furnace. A servant of God, like the three Hebrew boys, will not bow to this world and its culture today and its way of living. Instead, they will come out from the world and be separate. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He that serves the Lord will abide forever. Don't be deceived into believing that you can fellowship with the world, be like the world, to win people unto the Lord. It does not work that way. In the 17th chapter of John, before Jesus died on the cross, he prayed unto his heavenly Father, he prayed for his followers in that day and for the followers that would come in the future. And he prayed, Father, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. In other words, separate them, preserve them from the world through thy truth. Don't bow to this world for fear of persecution. You don't know what a child of God will have to face in this final hour before Jesus returns. But when you face persecution, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for Jesus will meet you in that fiery furnace of persecution to preserve you. And if you do not bow, you will not burn. Who do you serve, God or people? Galatians 1.10, Paul wrote, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, 
I should not be the servant of Christ. When family and friends resist God and His truth, and they desire the same of you, do you compromise with them to keep the peace and retain their favor? Do you allow their sinful lifestyle and their opinions to influence you from pleasing God and obeying truth? Do you allow them to keep you out of church? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, I did not come to bring peace on earth, but a sword. And a person's enemy or their spiritual enemy shall be they of his own household. When a person seeks to please God above all others, including family, there will be among some family a certain level of division and maybe even persecution. Because the sword of truth, this is the sword Jesus speaks of. The sword of truth separates those who truly love God from those who don't. The sword of truth separates true servants of God from the hypocrite and the unbeliever and those who do not desire truth. Luke 6, 26, Jesus said, Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. The false prophets were men pleasers, not God pleasers. They sought to please people, to tickle their ears with what they thought they would desire to hear. They did not stand for truth. They did not declare, thus saith the Lord, in truth, but in deceit. They compromised truth for the approval of people. Will you compromise truth for the approval of anyone? When you serve God and bow to His Word, eventually there will be people in your life, like King Nebuchadnezzar, that will be upset and even seek to work against you. Even family who may not believe as you do, or love God and serve God as you do, yet they expect you to bow to them, to their desires and their lifestyle. But Jesus warned in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In other words, men, people, can only do so much to you. They may have the power to kill your body, but they cannot touch your eternal soul. Only God, the true and living God, has the power and the control and the authority over your body and your soul. Fear Him. Honor Him. Serve Him. Many people in this world think it's slavery and bondage to serve the Lord, that it's impossible to be happy. But the devil's blinded them because they cannot see what Jesus has provided through his sacrifice on the cross. Think about it. Jesus did not come into this world, suffer untold agony and die on the cross to put people into captivity and make them miserable. That's not why he came. He paid the price with his life to set people free from the slavery and bondage of sin and provide them with abundant life on this earth and eternal life in heaven. In this world, everyone experiences troubles and tribulations because this is not heaven. However, a servant of God can take heart and be of good cheer and have courage because the master they serve has overcome this world already. We serve a master who has all power 
and He loved us so much that He laid aside His glory in heaven, came to this earth, suffered and died for His servants. He gave us life. He gave His life so that we could be a part of the family of God and joint heirs with Him in heaven. We serve a master who provides for all of our needs. Not our wants, all of our needs, spiritual, physical, and financial. He will supply. We serve a master who promised to open up the windows of heaven upon our life and pour out the blessings in abundance as we obey him. We serve a master who invites us to come and give all of our burdens to him, all of our troubles and cares to him, and he in turn would give us rest. This is the kind of master Jesus is. We serve a master who by his Holy Spirit provides his children love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, on and on, spiritual fruits produced within. And we serve a master who conquered death, hell, and the grave, not for himself, but for his servants. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15 says, Choose you this day whom you will serve. You cannot serve two masters, so choose you this day. From this day forward, who will you serve? Will you serve God or sin? Will you obey God or people? Will you bow to God's will or bow to your own will? God will let you decide in this life. He will because here he will not force anyone to serve him. But his word declares that a time will come in the future that everyone will bow to Jesus Christ. Friend, will you bow to him in heaven or hell? Will you bow to Jesus? You will bow whether you want to or not. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Friend, I invite you tonight, if you are bound and a slave to sin, turn to Jesus right now. Let the power in his blood break that bondage and set you free. Let the power in his blood make you a brand new creature. Receive the born again experience. It's why Jesus came into this world. Serve Jesus in this life. And on tomorrow, you will be in heaven. Right now, by faith, humbly bow yourself at the foot of the cross and pray this prayer with me. And let the blood of Jesus wash you clean of all of your sin. And I want everyone here to say this prayer tonight. Most of you don't need to say it, but there may be one or a few in our midst who do. You out there tonight, pray this prayer with me. Say, O oh God, Save my soul. I confess my sin before you. Forgive me, Father, and I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe there is power in the divine blood of Jesus, power that washes away all of my sin. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, dear Jesus. And amen. And friend, if you meant that prayer, Jesus is yours. And what that means is the Savior of your soul will heal your body. 
and he will do so by the power and the blood that he spilled at Calvary. For if that blood is powerful enough to wash away your sins from your soul, it's powerful enough to heal your body, to cleanse your body of any sickness, any affliction, any disease. The blood has all power. And Jesus sacrificed it for this very purpose. At the whipping post, by his stripes, you are healed. And Jesus said a believer would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. Friend, I'm the Lord's believer, Reverend Steve, and many believers out here. We're all believers, ready to agree with you in prayer. So put your hand against mine on the screen as a form of laying on of hands. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring those who are sick in body. Lord, those that have put their prayer request in the comment section, God, move for their need. Lay a healing hand upon each one. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of your son, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for its power. And Lord, by that power, let the healing virtue flow to them now. Heal them in the blood name of Jesus. Heal them. Deliver them in the holy blood name of Jesus. Set them free from their bondage tonight in the blood name of Jesus. And Lord, we'll give you the honor, the praise, and all of the glory. And amen. And friend, you watch every improvement, every sign, and know it's God. God moving for you, God healing you. And you are now on the road to recovery, just as Jesus said. And give him praise and glory, and let us know what God has done for you. Let your light shine for Jesus. And you need the Holy Ghost, the oil of the Spirit in your temple, to shine the light in this dark hour of sin. You can receive the Holy Ghost. But before I call this anointing down upon you, I want everyone in the auditorium, if you're in need of prayer, get up at this time, go over to, to my left, your right to the side, and I will meet you over there. And the rest of you come to the altar tonight. Present yourself before the Lord and let the Lord bless you in a special way. Let him anoint you to serve him in a greater way, to serve him all out, to give all unto him, a living sacrifice, to give all unto him like the three Hebrew boys, to serve the Lord and the Lord only. In the blood name of Jesus, in the blood name of Jesus, and you out there tonight, you're in need of the Holy Ghost. You want to receive this anointing tonight? I'm going to call it down. Lift up your hands before the Lord right now and just start praising the Lord. Start praising Jesus, glorifying the one in whom you serve, glorifying him for your blessings, just praising him because he's worthy, praising him, committing yourself to him in a greater way and just start praising him. And you who don't have the Holy Ghost, lift up those praises unto Jesus. Continue to praise him. And when the Holy Ghost moves in, when he comes in to you, he will take those praises over. He will speak in another language through you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring the people before you. God, anoint each one to receive the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I call this anointing down. Receive ye the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Oh, friend, I hope you've enjoyed today's program. And if this ministry is a blessing to you, if you've received a miracle or a healing through this Jesus ministry, please tell us about it. We love to hear from you. You can send those testimonies by email. Send them to testimonies at earnestangely.org. In fact, friend, you can also send your testimonies and your prayer request to our Facebook page, and you can send them through our live stream. And in fact, I'd like for you to join us on our live stream for the services. It's just like being in church with us. And you can be blessed in a great way as you enjoy the preaching, the music and singing and prayer over all of your requests. And during the service, you can put in those prayer requests and those testimonies believing and expecting God to move for you. So you can become a subscriber to our YouTube channel at Ernest Angley Ministries. And when you click the notification bell, well, that means you will be notified 
when new content is added, and you will be notified before each of our live stream services. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're adding new content all of the time. And I'd like to invite you, if you're able to, be with us for services in person. We always welcome visitors to worship the Lord with us. And in fact, so many of you, you are watching and joining the live stream all of the time. Well, you're just a part of us anyway, so you might as well come be with us in person. Every weekend we have three services, Friday at 7 p.m., Sunday 10 a.m., 7 p.m. You will be greatly blessed. And friend, we appreciate the way you stand by with your viewership, your prayers, the way you stand by with your tithes and your love offerings. It's all going to win souls and God will richly bless you for it. And always remember, no one's ever loved you like Jesus loves you. We look forward to seeing you next week. Remember, you are special to God. This program was paid for by the partners of Ernest Angeli Ministries.